In another place, Allah Azza wa says, "Ilamu annama al-hayatu dunya la'ibun wa lahun." Know that worldly life is nothing more than play and entertainment. So this is one word, one way that word lahu is understood. Another way the word lahu is understood is that which keeps you busy and takes you away from something you're actually supposed to be doing. And that's exactly what entertainment is. Entertainment essentially is a waste of time. And you could be using that time for something more productive, but you basically lost that time entertaining yourself. That's the essence of the word lahu. But from it, when you come to the word ilha, it means to be distracted, to be pulled away from something. And in the verb itself is already embedded the idea that the thing that distracted you was less important, and the thing you were distracted away from was more important. That was more, that's already embedded in the word itself. Now, similarly, it's used in many places in the Quran. For instance, in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, Allah warns us, "Ya ayuha ladina amanu la tulhikum." Same verb. This is over there. It's in fi'l nahi. This is in the present tense form. La tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an dikrillah. Don't allow your money and your children to be to to dis, to delude you, to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. So Allah is teach, establishing a point there. When it comes to remembering Allah, then even your money and your children are less important. And they are actually distractions from remembering Allah. Actually our money and our children should be a means by which we should remember Allah. And that lesson we will learn in this surah. How do you take what you have, and that becomes a means not to forget Allah, but a means to remember Allah. That's the lesson essentially in this surah. So it's, the surah begins with a complaint about us being you know, distracted, us losing the sight of things. And it concludes with a lesson that will teach us, it will teach us a profound lesson. The very things that distract us are supposed to be the things that remind us. They're supposed to be reminders. So it's a rewiring of our attitudes that's gonna take place in this surah. So alhaqum, it deluded you. I'm saying it as the subject, it deluded you. What is that it? What's the subject of the verb? What is the fa'il? It's at-takathuru. At-takathur is the next word in the ayah. So Allah is not saying it deluded you, He is saying at-takathur, which I'm not translating yet, deluded you, it distracted you. The first thing takathur means is the desire of having a lot. Kathir itself means a lot. At-takathur, the desire to have a lot. So the first meaning is the desire to have a lot distracted you. That's the first meaning. The desire to get a lot distracted you. You were so busy wondering, I don't have enough, I need to get more. I only have a rental, I need to buy a house. I only have an old car, I need to get a newer car. I only have this much savings, I need more savings. I only have one business, I need to establish another business. I only have this, I need more. There's always this desire of getting more and more and more. Your mind was always busy doing that, and it distracted your mind from thinking about something that was more important. That's the first meaning. The second meaning of takathur is the, com- the competing in getting a lot. So the first thing was wanting a lot for yourself. The second is competing with others in getting a lot. How come that guy got more than I did? It dis- this, this urge to compete with others in what you have. Constantly comparing your car with somebody else's car. Your house with somebody else's house. Your clothes with somebody else's clothes. Your assets, your, your wealth with somebody else's wealth. So this distracts you. The first thing was you want it for yourself. The second is you're competing with others. This attitude of competition between you, it keeps you, it keeps you busy. By the way, this attitude even takes place in social issues. They had a wedding. So how, how should our wedding, our family's wedding be better than theirs? Yeah. So the first thing was wanting more, and the second was competing in more. That's the second meaning. Here's the third meaning. It is taking pride in having more. At-tafakhur ba'ad takathur. To take pride in the fact that you have more. They didn't ask you about your car. They didn't ask you. But you felt an urge to tell them anyway, because takathur implies, not only do you have it, you like to tell people you have it. But the fourth thing the word takathur has is, something that is shared. Ta'awun. Competition. Not just competition, but cooperation among each other. Right? When you have, what this fourth meaning is, is, all of you have the same thing. All of you share the desire of wanting more. There is not one of you that wants less. Every one of you wants more. You all, have, all of you have that in common. And this common urge to want more and more and more, and to compete with each other. This one thing that has united all of you. By the way, this is one thing that unites people that are even different in religion, race, ethnicity, age. You could be different in so many ways, right? But what is, what is one thing all people have in common? They want more. 
They want more than what they have. Nobody's happy with what they, what they have already. And Allah says, this sentiment, this attitude, it deluded you. It distracted you. Don't allow your monies and your children to distract you from what? From the remembrance of Allah. There's a from there. There's an additional information. There's a piece of information that you're expecting. Now in this surah, Allah Azza wa did not mention an ay shay. An what? In regards to what are we distracted? So now, by leaving it open, by leaving it open, the benefit of that is it becomes itlaq. It becomes absolute. You figure it out. Allah wants you to figure out what is it that you're distracted from. Some of the ulama commented, the first thing, it distracted you from the truth. It distracted you from the one calling you to the truth. He's calling you to something important. Yeah, I'm busy with work, man. Somebody comes to you, hey, listen, why don't we learn something about Qur'an? Why don't we learn something about the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam? I'm busy right now. And Allah is saying, your busyness is actually a distraction. And it kept you from the truth. It kept you away from it. 